Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we received Dante as a special thank you for supporting the show on Patreon for one year now. Diogo brought his loved convoluted combo list for Timna and Dargo. Dante is on Simic Doom Tree, a spicy combo deck around Psychic Pickpocket. Bal wanted to try Gyra with the recently released Displacer Kitten, and Rodrigo is piloting Mons as beatdown bullies. Dante won the dice roll of this second game recording, and he is going first, having mulliganed once. He found a Wooded Foothills and Ottawara Soaring City for lands, with a Mana Crypt, Elvish Mystic and Elvish Spirit Guide that will allow for a turn to Kodama. From there, he can find a combo piece with Final of Devastation and still have Foster Storm for interaction. Bal kept his first 7 with his Steam Vents and City of Brass for lands, relying mostly on an early Dockside Extortionist to slowly go off with stuff like Experimental Synthesizer while crying every time due to Artificer's Assistant, Red Elemental Blast and Muddle Mixture for some interaction. Rodrigo kept his first 7 with a Lucky Gemstone Caverns, Exotic Orchard and Misty Rain Forest for lands. This allows for an early Sylvan Library to start fueling his hand, or slow start with the Deathrite Shaman to have Opposition Agent at ready on turn 2. Crop Rotation can find him Bazaar of Baghdad to help discard the creatures that eventually would kill his opponents. Lastly, Diogo kept his first 7 with an Arid Mesa, Snow Covered Swamp and Blood Creed for lands. Sarah Ascendant on turn 1 can start gaining some life for a juicy Ad Nauseam. Dark Ritual can allow for a turn 2 Timna or early Nos as well if he finds the tutors. Dwergi is always a great storming card and Sacrifice is top notch in those Dardogo loops. Before we get into the match, a quick reminder, tomorrow there will be the second T1 Con qualifier held in Lisbon and some of us will be attending, so come join us for a day full of action or watch the stream online at the CDH Portuguese League's YouTube channel. Ready for the match? Before the game starts, Rodrigo announces his Gemstone Caverns, exiling an exotic orchard. Dante then starts his turn by playing a Wooded Foothills and cracking it for a tropical island. He then casts a Mana Crypt and follows it with his Elvish Mystic, passing the turn. Bal plays a Scalding Tarn and cracks it for a Volcanic Island, to then cast an Artificer's Assistant, also passing. Rodrigo keeps a trend of turn 1 fetches with a Misty Rainforest, cracking it for a Bayou, to then cast a Sylvan Library and passing the turn. Another fetch, an Arid Mesa from Diogo, being cracked for a Scrubland and then casts a Serra Ascendant, ending his turn. Dante rolls and loses his first creep roll. He plays an Ottawara Soaring City and exiles an Elvish Spirit Guide for green mana to cast his commander, Kodama of the East Tree, passing the turn. Bal draws into a gamble, so he plays an untapped Steam Vents and casts the gamble, searching for a Jewel Lotus. He randomly discards Dockside Extortionist, which is quite a big blow. He casts the Lotus, triggering his bird and scrying to the top. He then cracks the Lotus to cast his commander, Gyra Weatherlight Captain, once again scrying the same card on top. He then attacks Rodrigo for 1 because he has Sylvan Library and then he passes. Rodrigo draws and pays 8 life to draw 2 extra cards from the Library Trigger. He casts a Deathrite Shaman and then plays an Ancient Tomb, ending his turn. Diogo plays a Snow Covered Swamp and then casts a Dark Ritual. The table is apprehensive, but it's just Ram to cast Timna the Weaver. He then proceeds to combat. Rodrigo threatens to kill his Ascendant in case he attacks him, so Diogo attacks Bal for 6. Timna triggers and he pays 1 to draw a card which is a mana creep that he casts, passing the turn right after. Dante untaps and wins his crit roll. He then casts a Trinket Mage, entering and triggering himself and Kodama, and with the Kodama trigger Dante puts a Ledger Shredder into play, but in response to the Trinket Mage trigger, Rodrigo flashes in an Opposition Agent, so Dante's dreams of finding Lotus Bloom perish. It's a May trigger, so Rodrigo doesn't get anything in return. Dante then attacks Diogo with Kodama and passes the turn. Bal starts his turn with a City of Brass, he then casts a Tormod script, scrying with a bird and drawing with Gyra. He then casts Experimental Synthesizer, also triggering Ledger Shredder and Dante discards a Chromox. Bal scries to the top and draws it, and then Synthesizer triggers and he exiles an Arid Mesa. He then goes into combat attacking Diogo for 4, hoping him and Rodrigo manage to shut Ascendant offline. Rodrigo gets to his turn and only draws one card from the library trigger. He ponders for a bit and then casts his commander, the Beamtown Bullies. He attacks Diogo with the Bullies and then passes. Diogo gets to his upkeep and the Mana Crypt slaps his dreams away. Sarah is officially offline. He attacks Ball for 3, triggering Timna and paying 1 to draw a card. He shocks himself with an untapped Blood Crypt and then casts a Felor Stone. With it, he casts his commander Dargo, sacrificing 3 permanents. Shredder triggers and then he discards a Spell Seeker. Diogo then casts a Burnt Offering, sacrificing Dargo as an additional cost. However, in response, Dante casts a Fluster Storm. Diogo ponders for a second and also casts a Sacrifice, sacrificing Timna as an additional cost. So this way he can pay for the 4 Flusters. 
The social stack opens and Bal is pondering on his model to make sure, but setting Diogo way behind by countering this means the game will be skewed into a 3 player pod, so Bal wants Diogo still in the game and lets it resolve. With the mana from Burnt Offering, Diogo casts Arnfell Horn of Bounty, which resolves. He discards a card, activating it, but finds only lands. He still discards another card and finds a Jewel Lotus, which he casts, and then he recasts Dargo, ending his turn with no cards in hand. Dante gets to his turn and takes 3 from the Crypt. He then casts a Talisman of Curiosity, and without much else to do, he fires a Time Twister, with a single card in hand. Leather Shredder triggers and Bal responds to it with a Red Elemental Blast, on the Shredder though. He then draws and discards a Finale of Devastation, and Twister resolves. Everyone shuffles up for new 7 cards, and Dante doesn't even find a land in those, so he casts Joraga Tree Speaker and passes without anything for the Kodama trigger. Bal gets to his turn and he casts a Mox Diamond, triggering to Scry, leaving it on top and then draws it from Joyra. He then discards a Cavern of Souls and then plays a Training Sensor. He then casts an Izet Signet, triggering to Scry and then drawing it. He then casts the Reality Ship, scrying to the bottom and then drawing. He looks at the top card and then attacks Rodrigo for 1 before passing. Rodrigo untaps and draws 1 extra from the library trigger. He plays a Taiga and then casts a Tormenting Voice, discarding a Finorn Helps though. Quite sad he didn't get a nice card to discard yet. He then casts a Lion's Eye Diamond and follows it with a Soul Ring. He still casts an Elvish Mystic and then attacks Bal with his Commander before passing. Diogo draws and laughs as he top decked Burnt Offering again, which he casts sacrificing Dargo as an additional cost. But Bal also laughs as he also naturally drew Muddle the Mixture again, and this time he counters it. He now casts Impulsive Pilferer, and then activates the horn discarding an Entomb, and found the necessary mana he needed, casting Dark Ritual, and then Soul Ring. Now he cracks Jeweled Lotus for 3 red and recasts Dargo quite cheaply. Impulsive Pilferer creates him a treasure, and he now casts Sacrifice, sacrificing Dargo as an additional cost for 7 black mana. He now discards to the horn, finding even more mana. He cracks the treasure and then cores Impulsive Pilferer. He now casts the Mana Vault from the Exile, and then casts Altar of Dementia, ready to go off. He sacrifices one of the Pilferers, targeting Dante to melee card, and in response to the Pilferer trigger, Rodrigo channels a Bozejo, targeting the Altar. In response, Diogo sacrifices another Pilferer, targeting Dante to melee card, and gaining a treasure, and then flashes in Cathar Commando and activates it, targeting Bal's Tormod script, which Bal responds to by activating it and exiling Diogo's graveyard. He still activates the altar one last time, sacrificing the last pilfer and milling Dante for one, before the Bozatia channeling resolves and the last activation as well, thinning Dante's library of three lands. Not bad. He now discards his last card in hand to the horn, and he plays the Ancient Tomb, as the agent is still on the board. He recasts Dargo and still sacrifices Mana Vault as an additional cost, so it's one less damage at each draw step. He recasts Timna and passes. In the end step, Rodrigo casts a free deadly relic, targeting Kodama, and in response, Dante evokes an Endurance by exiling a Card of Calling. It enters play, treating Kodama, and he puts a Sylvan Library into play. Evoke also shuffles Diogo's graveyard to the bottom, as he plays Breach and Luros, and this way the altar is gone again. We're back to Dante. He wins his Crypt Roll and then pays 8 life to keep 2 extra cards from the library. He then casts a Sakashima the Imposter, entering as a copy of Joyra, as he needs some card draw. He then plays a Sunscorched Desert, pinging Rodrigo, and then levels up Joraga Tree Speaker, to be able to cast Felor Stone, drawing a card from his Joyra and ending his turn. Bal draws and peeks at his top card, due to the chip. He doesn't have much going on on his hand, so he fires a Wheel of Fortune. In response though, Rodrigo casts Slaughter Pact on Bal's Joyra, and Bal responds with an offer he can't refuse. However, after some thinking, Dante fears the wheel could be too good for Diogo, and he also kinda wants to refill, so he fires an unsubstantiate on the Slaughter Pact. This way, the offer doesn't resolve and Rodrigo doesn't get the treasures. Rodrigo does recast the pact on Joyra before the wheel resolves. Everyone discards and draws new 7 cards. Bal plays a command tower and then casts an Arcane Signet, scrying to the bottom and picking at the top card. He still casts a Codex Shredder, leaving the top card as is and passes. Rodrigo untaps and pays for the Slaughter Pact. He only draws one card from the library, while Bal and Diogo are still discussing the first Zero Ascendant attack. By the way, leave a comment below if you would fall for the bluff and not attack Rodrigo, or if you would still attack him considering the removal would be better aimed at Kodama and therefore the damage would go through. Rodrigo plays a Snow Covered Forest and then casts a Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the Elf and searching for an Emerald Charm, hoping to eat two birds with one stone. 
He attacks Baal with the bullies and passes. Diogo gets to his turn, plays a Phyrexian Tower, and as Rodrigo is telling him he shouldn't go for the win, he discards a card to the horn, and exiles, and add Nelson to it. He discards another one for two more exiled cards, and a third one, still digging. He then goes to combat and attacks Rodrigo with Dargo, triggering Timna and paying one life to draw a card. He discards another one to the horn, and he found a nice one now. He casts Dothy Voidwalker, which would stop Rodrigo's shenanigans, so in response, Rodrigo casts an Entomb, but still in response to that, Diogo fires a source to plowshares on the Bintown bullies, and the whole Emerald Charm plan just falls down the drain, unfortunately. Rodrigo still responds with the Veil of Summer to draw a card, and then he resolves his Entomb, finding a Leveler. Diogo then sacrifices Timna to his Phyrexian Tower and discards another one to the Horn. He still discards a Red Elemental Blast to the Horn for two more exiled cards, and casts the Lotus Petal he found, which he cracks to cast the Ad Nauseam. It does resolve, and he threads carefully. He ends up not finding any combo pieces, but at low life he stops as he still has the Horn to keep digging, so he starts discarding stuff. He casts a Mana Crypt, which allows him to cast Jessica's Will, targeting Dante with seven cards in hand and then a Chromox, imprinting an Opposition Agent. He casts his Arcane Signet and still discards another card to delve deeper. He now casts an Abrade to kill Rodrigo's Oppo, and free way to his Diabolic Intent, which finds him a Dockside Extortionist, which he casts, creating 13 treasures. After that, he casts a Peer into the Abyss, targeting himself, and with such low life, Rodrigo responds to it, casting his Emerald Charm, targeting his Deathrite Shaman, to hopefully kill Diogo after that. But he had Deflecting Sword at hand from the Nos, and responds with it, changing the target to his Dargo. He draws 18 cards, and starts dumping some more rocks, like Mox Opal and Lion's Eye Diamond. He now casts Phyrexian Altar, and he also found the last piece of the puzzle, Mayon Devil. This way, he demonstrates a loop where he sacrifices Dargo to the Altar for red mana, and recasts him over and over again, always costing a single red from all the sacrifice stuff he threw to the shopping block during this turn. At each iteration, Mayhem Devil triggers and he pings his opponents to death. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. This match was full of wheels which filled everyone's hands, but eventually Diogo took the most out of them as a Tubo deck, especially with the Arnfall Horn of Bounty available for extra digging power. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Dragon Housecat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, and Zinan, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!